Hi, everyone. My name is Elise Finney, and I'm with Done With Divorce, and we brought on a, a state attorney today, Emily Rappaport with Rappaport Law, just to ask her a question specifically kind of about wills. Emily, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you, Good. Elise. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, Emily has been a regular speaker for us in some of our divorce initiatives, and she has this presentation. She's always saying, where there's well, there is a way. And so that kind of made me start thinking about motivation and how do we get people to be motivated as they're coming out of divorce to then also want to recreate or even potentially from the beginning stages, create a estate plan. So the question here, Emily, is what is your best motivational advice you can share that will demonstrate the importance of creating a estate plan? Sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, estate planning is, is very important in general. I would say it's almost more important post-divorce because a lot of the aspects of life that you relied upon with a spouse, you know, such as survivorship benefits, guardianship, just as a, a surviving parent of children and other factors, you know, they're gone. Once you're divorced, now you don't have that other party involved. So you need to reevaluate your situation and who the players are in your life. You know, oftentimes people contact me in general because they want to address guardianship or they want to avoid probate. Um, and then there's some tax implications as well. But the big things post-divorce are really the first two guardianship and probate avoidance. Because now think about your circumstances personally, coming out of divorce, you know, hopefully your relationship with your ex is amicable. That is not always the case, but even if it's amicable with, amicable with your ex, it may not be with all their family. So while you were married, you and your spouse may have agreed and thought, okay, mentally, or whether you actually put it on paper, if something happens to us, we want ex-spouse's parents or ex-spouse's brother or sister or someone else in our lives to care for our children. But now that that relationship with your spouse has dissolved, the relationship with those other people may have dissolved as well. Yep. So you may want to take the time to consider, you know, one horror story or fact around guardianship is that if you don't have something in writing and something happens to both parents of the child, then the children or, ch or child or children go to the possession of the child protective services and then end up in foster care until someone petitions the court for guardianship. Obviously, no one wants that. So when you are now single, you really need to start thinking about, obviously, in most circumstances, your ex-spouse has uh, parental rights, that if something happens to you, you have your the spouse or the parent there, the the husband, the, the father or mother there to kind of catch all and be the surviving parent. But what happens if you're both gone? You want to be able to take the reins on that and say, okay, if we're gone, I want my brother or my sister or my friend or my parents to raise my child the way that I all my values and in my hometown or in my situation, whatever it is. So that's a big factor when we think about things to consider in estate planning post divorce. Probate. Probate becomes, or probate avoidance, is even, doing a proper estate plan is even more impo important when you're no longer married, because so many oh. assets while you're married are held jointly. So for instance, your home that you had with your spouse, most likely you were both on title. That's not always the case, but oftentimes that is. So if something happened to you, seamlessly passes to your spouse and vice versa. A lot of assets are jointly held, you know, joint bank accounts, joint brokerage accounts. Um, and then there's survivorship benefits that are there by default for like 401ks, TSPs. All that is severed now. And so hopefully you negotiated a bunch of stuff in your property settlement agreement. Um, but now you have to think, okay, if something happens to me and I have children, first of all, I want to make sure they're the actual ones who get the assets or anyone else in life, whoever your intended beneficiaries are. Uh, and that maybe this is very, very common. If you leave assets to your children, you may not want your ex to be the one managing those funds. And certainly if your kids are minors, if you don't do an estate plan, there's going to be a conservatorship and a probate in tandem. It's long, lengthy, time-consuming, expensive, all the things nobody wants to deal with. And generally, the default would be that the surviving parent is the one who would manage the funds. And that person may have moved on to another relationship and used some of your money for that person or themselves and not your children. 
Um, yeah. Sometimes they're a great fit, but you never know. So there's many things to consider and you just want to reevaluate your, your life and circumstances. Absolutely. So the short end of all of this is that it's an investment you're making that could be very, very costly if it's not done right. Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, that's good. a good summary of my long-winded description. <laughs> Well, there's a lot to cover. So I appreciate your time. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you, Elise.